Hey everybody, Jack Barnwell here down in sunny Southwest Florida, and we thought it would be fun to take you guys through a planting installation of all of these beautiful aquapots. I'm down here at our C3 Gardens shop, uh, like Santa's little workshop. This is where the magic happens. A uh, tremendous amount of planters are coming and going out of our shop on a daily basis. Right now we're probably averaging 50 or 60 going out every single day. Um, and a collection like this, this is one home's aquapot collection that goes around their lanai and around their pool and everything like that. Uh, we bring them back to the shop, empty them all out, clean them all out and everything, get fresh new soil and fertilizer and whatnot in them, and then lay out all the plants. We have a big nursery of all kinds of fun stuff here, and we lay out all the plants and kind of get a theme going. and. Uh, and then we plant them all up and then we deliver them in these trailers and, and we make the magic happen on a regular, constant, consistent, crazy basis. So uh, I thought I'd pause for a moment and do a video to show you guys through this planting. Um, I'm gonna plant kind of fast, so try and keep up with me. I will talk you through a little bit of the plants and what I'm doing and why. Um, so this should be fun for y'all that are sitting at home. Maybe it's a little cold and gray where you are. So hopefully this brings a little color and lush life into your, uh, into your video feed here this evening. Um, this one right here, I just planted up. So that was the first of this collection. And now I'm gonna move on to this other one. These are all aquapots. They're all self-watering, beautiful aquapot ceramic planters. Uh, that's all that we do down here at C3 Gardens is self-watering pots and, um, and thousands and thousands of them. Uh, this absolutely beautiful alocasia here is going to go in the back of this planter and as i go i'm really just kind of pawing a lot of this soil right out and making a mess because i'm right here at the shop and it's really easy to just clean up and work on and fix what we're doing at a later time this is the fill tube where we fill up the water reservoir i usually pull that right kind of up and out of the way so that as i'm planting and tucking plants in I'm not accidentally stuffing a whole bunch of soil down in there. And then when I'm done planting, I can just whoop, push it right back down. So that guy's uh, absolutely gorgeous. I think that's called uh, Maui Gold or something. Um, this is a, a beautiful, beautiful cordyline fruticosa. And this one we get from Excelsa, which is a great, great grower down by Miami. Um, you're gonna watch here. I'm gonna just drop that smash it lovingly. This is a loving, lovingly smashing this cordyline. Because what I'm doing there, there's four really nice strong uh, plants in this, in this uh, three gallon pot. And I'm just sort of loosening those roots up a little bit because that's what I'm really after right now is those roots. And I've got a beautiful, beautiful plant there. And I wanna take that guy and split this guy apart because I know, there it is, they are actually four individual um, cuttings that were put in this pot. So they are rooted together a little bit, but it's very easy to kind of tease them apart. So I can then take these guys and tuck them right in tight and all up in. See, I can split kind of one on each side of that branch there and tuck those guys on either side of this guy and they'll really weave up into that alocasia. Then in the middle, I'm going to feature a Plectranthus or Mona Lavender. And I'm kind of managing my soil level as I go by just pawing that soil out Got some really cool coleus here that does really well. Pulling a little bit, little bit of that stem color out with that there. And I'm gonna put one on each side. This coleus is really easy for us to maintain and kind of keep trim back down here. And then I've got some Evolvus. This is Evolvus, blew my mind Evolvus. Really tough, tough plant down here does really well nice blue color and those will spill out right there. So that planter 
It's looking pretty good. I'm going to come back to that in a little bit to finish it out. Spanish moss, you know, clean it all up and uh, give it the business. But for now, I'm going to move on. <laughs> this next beautiful, large, broad vase. And again, I know where all these planters go on this property. So that's why I'm laying them out accordingly. But um, this one has a nice back to it with these palms and these different quarter lines here. And uh, I kind of lay them out roughly with the plants so I can see it and get a feel for what I got going on there. And then I'll dissect it and start planting it up. This one's going to get a majesty palm kind of ripping at the roots here. I know these plants are in absolute plant heaven as soon as they get into an aquapot. So I have no doubt that they're gonna do really, really well from planting literally thousands and thousands of these pots over the years. I know really well what these plants love. I'm gonna knock the soil off of that guy because all I'm after is that bundle of beautiful roots. And look at that quarter line. Super fun. This one's called Sherbert, I think. Sherbert. Tuck that guy into the palm, kind of interlace the... Uh... This is fun too. This time of year we plant up poinsettias as um, little fun fillers in our aquapots. This is a beautiful pink poinsettia there. Which is, they actually do really well for us down here. And they do get a little naked at the bottom. So I like to kind of tuck them into the middle of a planter like that and they'll reach out and have some fun through the season. And when that thing fades and it's sort of done, by then all these other plants are gonna be huge and take over the rest of the planter and we can just cut it right down to nothing. Put this Mayan mask alocasia in there. That's gonna be really fun and reach out with these big, broad, beautiful leaves. Super fun there. Similar leaf shape with this begonia, this polka dot begonia, super fun. I'm gonna tuck him on the other side, because that's gonna reach out and be really fun and wild on that other side there. And then I'm gonna throw a little Calathea action in the front right there, and a nice marble pothos to finish it out right in the very front right there. So that guy looks pretty good, like it. This one. Got these super cool bromeliads, which I love. Really into those. Got three of those laid out in here. Three different Calathea there. And this little Song of India. That's a Dracaena, Song of India. I'm gonna put that Song of India right in the middle because it'll get a little tall if we let it. And then paw these Calatheas in, in a triangle around the side. As you can see, I'm making a complete and total mess. But that's why my crew loves me so much because I keep them all employed with all of my messes. Tuck those bromeliads right on the surface. They really don't like to be buried very deep. They're just right there on the surface, kind of peeking out. And that is going to make up that planter looking good. This guy, these are really cool. This is also an alocasia called Serendipity. Really dark, dramatic foliage. I know this particular client loves these alocasias. Um, in their pool, Lanai, they get really big and wild and tropical. Um, again, I'm just pawing a little bit of that soil off of there. Lighten the load a little bit. And I'm going to put that right in the center. Pa, 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 pa. Pack it down in there nice. Keeping my crown height about an inch below the surface. And these are ground orchids, which flower beautifully. This particular ground orchid is a purple flower. Really, really tough, tough plant for us too. Cool foliage. You know, they get pretty big and wild, but super tough. Most importantly, really tough. I like that a lot. So that one. And that this one is actually going to be the same 
because they flank kind of the pool on the far sides. So I'm gonna plant up this one really quick and then I'll show you what's gonna go between those uh, ground orchids. deeper and you can see I'm a little bit tough with these plants but in my opinion if a plant isn't tough enough to handle the way I plant then it don't it don't deserve to be in my garden tough plants have a place in my gardens and landscapes because let's face it you got to be tough to survive in this world it ain't easy out there. So now that trio of ground orchids will be really pretty. And what I've got is this lemon coral sedum, which really does well for us down here. This sedum is super, super pretty. That lemony, beautiful color. And I'm pulling a lot of that soil out as I go because, again, I wanna make sure I've got plenty of room for my Spanish moss, and I don't want my soil height to be so high that when these get watered, they're gonna uh, you know, wash soil all over the, uh, the pool lanai floor. So I wanna make sure they always finish out a little low, which uh, that one is perfectly. So, We'll finish that one out real quick with three. And these spread pretty nicely. They'll fill this in like a foam of that chartreuse yellow. You can see a theme across this whole planting of pink and chartreuse tones coming out. And uh, that's because this particular client loves that. So you can see that kind of repeated theme throughout here. And then lastly, in this last planter here, we've got this amazing, stunning bromeliad. It's a real specimen there. I'm gonna, oh, did you hear that? I just dumped out like a half a gallon of water that was stored inside this bromeliad. That's how they, they, they drink, is they just store all that water right in there. It's really cool. I'm gonna just knock a little bit of this extra soil off there and tuck him lovingly right into the middle. These uh, <clears throat> lime pothos, we propagate right here at C3 Gardens and make lots and lots of pothos. And I really love the lime pothos especially. It's really just amazing color. And again, brings us that color throughout this whole planting. Then I'm going to dot in some of these hypoestes, this polka dot plant, which would be kind of fun because they do kind of get tall and stringy and funny. So they'll kind of come up and reach their way through that bromeliad a little bit with that polka dot funky color, which are really, they're just really, really cool. People underestimate that plant, but they will do it and they'll find their way up through that, like a little froth. And then another great plant is this wandering Jew here. I'm gonna tuck those in right toward the edge. Let them weave all up in there. They're gonna give us some cool silver kind of effervescence. Really fun color. I'm putting those right in front of the hypo, the hippos, the hypoestes, because I know that they'll play well together. And uh, they're gonna all just turn into a big old ball of love and play really nicely with this big bromeliad. So that is this planting looking pretty good. After a whole collection like this is planted up, uh, typically we'll rinse them all off and top water them with, um, um, you know, obviously with some hose water and make sure that they're all cleaned. Um, but for, for the sake of this video, I will uh, move right along and show you the next step that we do after we rinse them and top water them all. 
we, uh, we moss them. So we take this living, breathing, beautiful Spanish moss, which is a lovely living plant, and we use it as our mulch. Again, that's why I was keeping the soil level down a little bit on all these, because I really want to put a nice inch of Spanish moss in these planters and tuck that right in. It is alive, it is a plant. I'm literally planting Spanish moss right now, but it also helps to keep the planter really nice and clean. So if there's a big rainstorm or if you're top watering with a hose, um, it's gonna help to keep the soil from splashing out or anything like that. And I think it just gives it a real florist finish there and uh, helps that planter to look quite nice when delivered. And then when we do deliver these and put them all into the lanai in their spaces and such, we um, clean them all off and buff the planters and stuff, of course. And then we um, finish them with some leaf shine. So all of the bigger broad leaves like this cordyline here, ch -ch 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 -ch, and this big stunning alocasia, I'm sure this stuff's totally organic, right? It's delicious. <laughs> um, all of these leaves will get a little coating of leaf shine, which not only makes them look really beautiful and stunning at delivery, but it also helps to kind of lock in and seal a little moisture in. So it, their initial shock factor of being transplanted into these planters and stuff is minimized and they won't transpire and they won't lose as much moisture right away for that first week or so while they're getting their roots established. So we don't really spray any flowers. We're really just spraying the bigger, broader leaves and like the pothos really like it, the uh, cordylines really like it, palms are fine with it, but anything like dracaenas don't like it and anything kind of like with a furry leaf um, does not like it so much. So. You have to be a little careful with what you spray um, uh, with the leaf shine, but it really, really makes for a beautiful presentation. So we'll get this one all cleaned up, buffed up, and ready to go. And this whole collection will be delivered tomorrow. So now I have this whole collection to lay out, get ready to go. That's a whole nother job. Right now here at C3 Gardens, crews are all out. So I really enjoy this time in the late afternoon to be able to get a bunch of planters and stuff dialed in and jammed out because tomorrow morning all these and more will be, uh, will be rolling out the door uh, to beautify the next lanai and uh, commercial property or whatever. Um, so we do really, really love what we do down here at C3 Gardens. Hope you guys all enjoyed this little video through some planters and some, some fun here and uh, we'll see you all again in the next video. Cheers.